the youth soccer system let's break it down especially in regards to club soccer even talking about the order of which teams are ranked where especially by league so I get this question a lot on my TikTok page. As some of you know, I have 150,000 followers and this is probably my most asked question. The club soccer, how does it work? How does it relate to college soccer? So not only do I wanna break down the pyramids here real quick, but I also wanna talk about how they affect college soccer. So first of all, you do need to play club soccer. That's just the reality of getting recruited in order to play college soccer. How does high school get into that? So high school is really great for video. The problem is if you play high school soccer, college coaches just aren't going, traditionally speaking. Now there are always exceptions. There's a high school coach at Harvard Westlake right now, who's also the coach at Cal State LA. I was coaching at Harvard Westlake for a hot minute. And when I was doing so, I was recruiting players of players I played against and players on my team. But on a mass scale, high school soccer is really not going to get you playing college soccer. So that means you got to play club. Now, most of you know that you're like, of course, I play club soccer, but which club level should I play for? Okay, there's a lot of different ones. And there's a lot of arguments as to which are ranked where. So I'm going to break it down. I should cover almost every single league when I do this. Okay, we ready? We're gonna start with the boys. MLS Next is tier one. And anybody that debates otherwise, again, I'm not saying if you're not playing MLS Next level that you're not division one college soccer ready. I'm just saying this is where the most exposure is received for boys at this time. MLS Next, ECNL is either right behind it or arguably right next to it. Then you have Boys Elite Academy, which is very good. There's this new league called NAL, National Academy League, ECNL, RL, and then below that you have Northeast Academy League, which is probably actually more relevant to say it's the same as NAL and Boys Elite Academy League. There's an argument to say it's even a little bit higher. There's E64, there's NPL, there's NPL Pro, and then underneath that you've got Co Soccer League, there's a CC league and basically Bay YSO United Co Soccer League and it goes down from there and there's a lot of them okay there's a ton of them and here I'm gonna put a pyramid of exactly the order so in saying that what does it mean exactly let's say you're playing MLS next does that mean you can play college soccer no it does not if you're playing E64 or NPL does it mean you cannot play college soccer no it does not all of these are capable of playing college soccer in my own career I was not playing at the MLS next level until the end of my senior year but I got recruited and played college soccer before then so it's definitely possible the biggest takeaway is you need to constantly be trying out for the best level teams over and over and over again and that is something that I was doing which eventually led to me getting a full ride scholarship now in saying that on this journey you're going to be told no a lot but it's really important that just because you're not playing MLS next does not mean you're not going to make it to the next level but you do need to be proactive whether you're playing MLS next or not I think about one story we had a student he had to take a gap year wasn't getting recruited was an MLS next player so he wasn't going to play college soccer luckily he found me gave me a call and then we got him from MLS next to playing division one soccer was he always the ability did he always have the ability to play college soccer for sure but he tried to play college soccer and couldn't find a team that was right for him you know he wanted to find the right school and so he ended up not playing college soccer but luckily he found me I guess you could say but also he took a gap year but he didn't want to do that that wasn't his plan and he was playing MLS next for a very big team Minnesota United which is a very like you think oh you play for them you're going to sign for anybody you want UCLA Wake Forest that's not how it works okay you have to be proactive no matter what level you're playing at okay so now you're like Zev I understand college soccer guy I know I have to be proactive which club should I play for so this does vary by team some clubs are better than others when it comes to the recruiting process some have a better reputation than others like solar in Texas has a great reputation reputation Santa Monica Surf has a great reputation and that's in California and their Boys Elite Academy so it can vary and your coaches also have a huge role to play here if they have connections it's not to say that you shouldn't like stay on that team you maybe should stay on that team but it varies and that's why I encourage you to give me a call so then I can talk to you a little bit more detail about your situation because then I can help you more nuance in saying that when you're looking at the levels the reason MLS next is the best is one theoretically if the coaches are doing a good job they're picking the best players but from a college perspective that's where the most experienced exposure tends to be okay and so because there's so much exposure there that's where most of them go to so if you look right now all my students right now for example are getting emails about id camps and showcases and the coaches are telling them i will be at the east playoffs i will be at the mls next event i'll be at mls next fest this is where they're going they're not keeping it a secret because there's the most people there and colleges don't have the budget now local schools can potentially go to your local games which almost never do college coaches go to league games i mean it happens but it's very rare they're going to showcases because they just can't afford to like go to one game to see one player unless you're the player which 
if you are the player, you don't, you know, good for you. That's awesome. That was never me. And I'm not really here to help those players. I'm here to help those players who are just like I was really great soccer players, super passionate, but they're not getting the attention they deserve because of the off the field aspects, understanding how to write the email, communicate. And for right now, what we're talking about today, the club soccer aspect, like the ability to find the club team, go on tryouts, etc. Okay. So now you have a general idea of the pyramid. I know for sure in the comments, which please leave the comments. I've missed a league here or there. I didn't want to go too deep into it because it gets even more and more confusing. But I do want you to leave your comments and say, hey, what about this league? Because then I will add it into my pyramid and tell you guys the answer. So as a review, boys, MLS Next, ECNL, USL Academy. That was probably even. So MLS Next, ECNL, USL Academy. Then underneath that, NAL for right now, I think NAL will grow and become probably ahead of ECNL because it's basically the second team for MLS teams, but we're not there yet. Then you have ECNR RL, Boys Elite Academy. So that'd be considered like the second or third tier. And it makes is, you know, by region, so it's not perfect. Then underneath that, you're going to have the NPL Pros, E64s, NPL, and there's a CCL League, there's Co Soccer League, etc. So I'm pretty sure I covered most of them, but I know there's more, so comment below and I'll be able to help you with that. Okay, now you understand the levels. Every year you need to be trying out for the higher level. Now, how do you get tryouts? Okay, one for ECNL teams specifically, they have tryouts available on their website, so you just got to go to their website. In the College Soccer Guide program, which is when you work with me, I have all the websites you need of every single team, so you just get a little bit faster, but it's all Googleable, so that way you can find the right team for you. Okay, got that out of the way. Now, what about trials for MLS Next teams? So I've made multiple videos on this. It's also in the College Soccer Guide program. Basically, if you can find the name of anybody within the organization, and then you can find another email that's similar. So let's say it's John is the head coach, and then you found another person who who does tickets, for example, and their name is Sarah, and it's Sarah at well, uh, let's just pick Minnesota, Sarah at Minnesota.com. Then you know it's whatever the head coach's name at Minnesota.com. So it's the same one. Now, how do you find it? Got to do some digging. LinkedIn can help as well. One of the most important aspects though of reaching out to those MLS Next teams is how you write the email template. And in the College Soccer Guide program, I have like a bunch of templates. We have templates specifically for the coach, specifically for the boss of the entire youth organization, so the director. We have it for other people within the organization because sometimes you're not going to get a hold of the person you need right away. So in my case, for example, I wanted to try out at the time it was called Chief USA. I wanted to try out for them and I couldn't get a hold of them. So instead I messaged like their U7s coach and said, U7s coach, dear coach, this is who I am. Uh, this is why I like your club. I live this far away, but here I've already been recruited by colleges and I'd like to try out for the MLS Next team. Who should I talk to? That was the key there. I would say, who should I talk to? Then they would say, oh, you should talk to John. Then when I reached out to John, I would say, hey, Billy told me to reach out to you. Now John is going, how do you know Billy? That means you're somebody. And then I would get my trial. I have to email them over and over again. And it's the exact same process for the recruiting process. The emails are no different. You attach your highlight video, you tell them who you're being recruited by. You work on your template. We'll do more YouTube videos on that soon. That is the recruiting process. It's literally just like that. So please reach out to them. You're going to get told no a lot. You may not even hear. Go to the field. Wait for to speak to somebody. If you want to play college soccer, less than 7% of you are going to do so. So you need to do what the majority are not willing to do. And frankly, the students I work with, I only want them to be as committed as I was, which was like, I'm going to do anything in order to play college soccer and maybe one day play, play pro soccer, which I did later. But I want you to play college soccer because it's so important to me. Okay. Now you've gotten tryouts. You're good to go there. You're playing for your club team. What is the next? Next stage in this realm. I want to touch on one other aspect, which is a little bit more complicated and nuanced, which is residential high schools and residential programs, which technically do fall under the club soccer pyramid, but they're not as often talked about. So like Barcelona Academy, Shattuck St. Mary's, uh, Black Rock. These are just like some high schools. If you are listening to this and you are under the age 14 and you really want to play at the top level D1 schools, you know, these are the types of organizations you do want to start reaching out to. If you're like, hey, I'm, I'm past that. I'm older than that. Those opportunities are still possible, but you really need to spend most of your time now on the college teams and you don't really have the opportunity to go try out for those. They can be expensive and far away, so it's not for everybody. But for example, I'm working with one student right now, started in seventh grade with them. They're going into eighth grade now. You're like, that's crazy. Why are you talking about college soccer? We aren't necessarily talking about college soccer, but we are talking a ton about club soccer. He's already, because of our proactiveness, he's gotten invited on trial to Sacramento Republic, which is a big deal because when we email college coaches, and club coaches who were trying to work up the club ladder and say, we've already been invited. It's really helpful because Sacramento is a big team and he plays for like a relatively 
smaller team in his region but he had a great video that he put together and he's already doing the process he's already going to be going to id camps of you know top top schools we're not going to really focus on the smaller schools at the minute he's also a good soccer player but how do you think maryland stanford commit kids at sophomore year they know about them in seventh eighth grade now they're not recruiting them necessarily but they've heard of them somebody's mentioned hey they're a baller they came to a camp now most of the kids at those camps are not going to play there of course that's like if you went to trial for chelsea but the fact that you could get in front of their faces at that young age even if you're not good enough like i wasn't good enough at that age for sure to get noticed but i was in a college environment i played against players older than me for this particular player they're going to be 13 14 i want them going to the high school id camps which you have to get permission to go to and sometimes they'll tell you no good now they know who you are but they know that you want to play at the next level so look the earlier you start just the way better off you are when it comes to club soccer and that's just a non-negotiable people ask me like when should you start the traditional time to start is freshman year going into sophomore year assuming you've already taken care of the club aspect if you've not taken care of the club aspect that needs to start eighth grade ninth grade so that way you can try out for teams try and get to an nal team ecnl team mls next team the bottom line is The most amount of exposure is with the MLS Next teams and the ECNL teams on the boys' side. We'll do a different video for the girls. That is what you need to understand as a boy soccer player. If you thought this video was helpful, please call me. The description's in the bio. Leave a comment. I love that too. Then I can answer your questions directly. I want to help you guys play college soccer so badly, but the more proactive you are, the better you will be. I'm the college soccer guy. If you need any more help, give me a call. Talk to you soon.